the real light bulb moment for me with Bitcoin is when you come to see its game theoretic aspects and that they govern at every scale, at both an individual level all the way up to the nation state level. And so if I'm a central bank and I determine with even a 0.1% probability that Bitcoin may, may disrupt my business model, that Bitcoin could represent an extinction level event for central banking. My prudent maneuver, game theoretically, is to hold 0.1% of my assets in Bitcoin, right? As a perfect hedge against its success. Because should Bitcoin succeed, and this the value of my central banking model collapse to zero, it would in theory be offset largely or mostly by an appreciation in Bitcoin, right? So that sort of kernel has been thrown into the, the geopolitical considerations between nation states. And now if you further consider that the central bank that adopts it first will benefit disproportionately because they're gonna acquire more of the network at a lower price. They're gonna take more territory on the absolute scarce monetary network that is Bitcoin at a lower price in advance and in, in anticipation of other central banks being forced into this uh, prisoner's dilemma situation. Like they're gonna be forced to play at some point. So you take those two factors together, there's a huge impetus for central banks to take some position in Bitcoin as an insurance policy against its, its success. And there's also a huge incentive to move first <laughs> So when that happens, I mean, the game theory is taking hold at a nation state level. And we already see this today. Like Iran has announced a sub $10 million Bitcoin mining project expressly to circumvent U.S. sanctions, right? So there's a demand internationally to get off the dollar, to have a, a neutral settlement layer um, such that you cannot be under the thumb of the U.S. government. No one, no one likes that. And I think in Ukraine, too, they're exploring Bitcoin mining. So you see it starting to happen. But the other, the other thing to remember is that central banks also have an incentive to do any acquisition of Bitcoin surreptitiously. Because if they announce, then all of a sudden they've, they've sparked the game theory everywhere. The price is running. They've, uh, they've reduced their ability to acquire it at a low cost. So I think the game will play out secretively over time, um, but it will reach a breaking point. And the interesting there, thing there is you know, money, money shapes reality for people and, and institutions. So the, the table that I'm using right now to, to support my laptop is an accessory to me based on my motivational significance, which is to record this, this episode with you. If all of a sudden I give someone $100 to jump over this table, the table instantly becomes an obstacle to them based on their motivational significance. So as you get you get skin in the game, so to speak, as, as uh, institutions or central banks start to hold Bitcoin, their incentives are changed, they shift alignment, right? They go from being arrayed against it to all of a sudden wanting to see it succeed, at least marginally. And as Bitcoin just becomes more and more scarce and more and more hard to obtain and imposes its rule set harder and harder on the established economic order, the more we accelerate towards a Bitcoin denominated future.